This is Africa, pure Africa. The Cruising on Rail team will traverse on board of the Rovos Rail, the pride of Africa, starting an epic and historic journey between Victoria Falls, Zimbabwe, and the Bay of Lobito in South Central Angola. A 15-day long adventure and an estimated total distance of 3,100 kilometers. Untamed traveling on board of one of the most luxurious trains in the world on the Copper Trail journey. All aboard! Rail embarks on this new expedition through Zimbabwe, Zambia, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Angola, traveling across the mighty Zambezi River from the incomparable Victoria Falls to the Kafue River for a sunset cruise. After visiting the Elephant Sanctuary in Lusaka, where teams rescue and rehabilitate orphaned elephants, a flight to South Luangwa National Park in Zambia for a three-day game drive safari. This park is bordered by the Muchinga Escarpment to the west and northwest and the winding Luangwa River to the south. Enjoy a tour of Lubumbashi in the Democratic Republic of Congo and then embark on the historic Copper Trail to explore Angola's recent history on short walks. The trip ends in Lobito. The city of Victoria Falls, popularly known as Vic Falls, is a town in the North Province, Zimbabwe. After Zimbabwe's independence, there was relative peace in the region, and Victoria Falls began to attract a new wave of tourism. The city of Victoria Falls became famous because of the beauty of Victoria Falls. It's the world's greatest sheet of falling water and significant worldwide for its exceptional geological features and active land formation processes with outstanding beauty attributed to the falls, the spray, mist, and rainbows. Victoria Falls is located on the Zambezi River, the fourth largest river in Africa, which also forms the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe. It's one of the biggest attractions in Africa and one of the most spectacular waterfalls in the world. The Victoria Falls Bridge crosses the Zambezi River, just below Victoria Falls, and was built over the second gorge of the falls. It is an active crossing point for pedestrians, as the river forms the natural border between Zimbabwe and Zambia. The bridge links the two countries and gives access to daily freight trains on both sides. Border posts are on both ends. In the towns of Victoria Falls, Zimbabwe, and Livingston, Zambia. <laughs> Discover African music during an evening out. It permeates African life and has a function to play in society. Many songs are used for religious ceremonies and rituals, to teach and provide guidance, to tell stories, and to mark the stages of life and death. Rovas rail passengers arriving from Pretoria end their journey here in the city of Victoria Falls and stay overnight at the majestic Victoria Falls Hotel. The Victoria Falls Hotel is considered as one of the most luxurious hotels in the world and a five-star gateway to the falls. 
The passengers are welcomed in a tribal manner. Before we set off, we welcome the new guests on the Copper Trail journey. The staff thoroughly service and prepare all the carriages to the high standards of the Rovas Rail Company. To preserve the spirit of a bygone era, there are no radios, televisions, or internet on board. This requires a special spirit and motivation to keep history alive today. Many of the passengers enjoy the formality of fine china and glassware, fresh linen, silver, and dress accordingly. The cruising on rail crew is allowed to film on board while these procedures take place. A unique behind-the-scenes insight into the world of exclusive train travel. The new passengers arrive at the Victoria Falls Hotel. Mr. Rohan Vos, owner and entrepreneur of Rovos Rail, personally welcomes all guests. I'm Rowan Foss, for those of you I might not have met, but I think I've met everybody. It's wonderful having you here today, and this is the uh, first trip that we're doing from Vic Falls to, um, uh, to Angola, to uh, Lubito. It's a 15-day journey, <clears throat> and it's called the Copper Trail because of the uh, railway line running through the Copper Belt. And we're going through the biggest copper mining area in the world. You know, we're a very small crowd. There are 23 of us on board. Uh, we have 14 carriages. And the back of the train is the observation car and the club lounge. And then we have all the sleepers. We have the dining car, kitchen car, and a lounge car sort of towards the front of the train. Nicholas will be doing his lectures in the front uh, lounge car. And if you're looking for a quiet place to read or something like that, that's the place to go. Now here we are in being able to build on a vision uh, that Rovers Rail had when it became clear, I think, after 2014, 2015, that the possibilities of this new route, because of the investment in the infrastructure, that a train could be brought into completely new areas of sub-Saharan Africa. Each coach is independent. You've got about 1,800 litres of water per carriage. Uh, meals, lunch is at 1 o'clock, dinner is at 7.30. Uh, we do ring a gong before meals, and uh, we do ask you for the evening just to dress up a little bit, please, you know, as best as you can. I put my money where my mouth is. Um, um, that, that is because I, I enjoy doing it. OK, chaps, well, I think that's about it. So there we go. Time to go aboard this inaugural adventure of a lifetime, the Copper Trail journey. Along this route, we will experience one of the most remarkable train tours in this part of the world, where heritage, culture, and a dash of adventure merge. But not before a local musician's performance. A heartwarming and traditional way of saying, we will meet again. The train departs Victoria Falls and will shortly cross the famous Victoria Falls Bridge to Livingston. The pride of Africa is center stage. A photo stop allows all passengers to capture this special moment on camera and into their hearts. As the sun sets, the train continues its journey to Kafue, our first stop in Zambia.
The next morning, preparations for breakfast start early. The start of a bright new day. Breakfast a la carte. All lunches and dinners are prepared on board with the finest cuisine. crosses the Kafwe Railway Bridge, a 477-meter-long steel girder truss bridge with 13 spans of 33 meters each, resting on concrete piers. Kafwe comes inside. Here, we will disembark the train for a sunset cruise on the Kafwe River. The Lady Betty is already waiting for us. This charming old houseboat is anchored right here on the banks of the Kafue River. Suitable for both leisure and business trips, this luxurious boat offers spectacular views and stunning sunsets. Today is an early wake-up call. Lusaka is in sight. Lusaka is the capital and largest city of Zambia. It is one of the fastest developing cities in southern Africa. Lusaka is the commercial and governmental center of Zambia and has access to the country's four main roads, going to the north, south, east, and west. English is the official language of the city administration and widely spoken. Today we visit the Lilai Lodge Elephant Sanctuary. It's here where teams rescue and rehabilitate orphaned elephants with the aim of returning them to the wild in Kafue National Park. Visitors can help the rangers prepare the special food the animals require. The orphan's mothers are often victims of poaching and human-wildlife conflict. Once an orphan has been rescued and stabilized, it is taken to the Lilai Elephant Nursery in Lusaka, where it receives intensive care around the clock. The dedicated and well-trained keepers are there for the elephants day and night. They help them overcome their loss and teach them behaviors they need to survive in their natural environment. Lusaka offers art markets of all kinds, such as the Kabwata Cultural Village, located on the outskirts of the city. The train continues our journey to Ndola. Ndola is about 320 kilometers north of Lusaka. It is the gateway to the country's mineral producing region. Many processing industries are here under production, including a large copper refinery. Good 
morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we finally arrived in Ndola. I would like everybody to please come to the lounge car. My name is Lawrence Azulu. I'm from South Africa, and I'm the train manager at Rofus Rail here. I'll call myself an all-rounder. <laughs> I think I get a new job description on a daily basis um, with my, my job title. Uh, basically, everything that has to do with anything on board the train is me. I have to make sure everything is uh, up to standard. The train is moving, the train is on time, the passengers are happy. We have enough on the train, what is needed to run uh, this journey. Um, all these cameras are following me everywhere ever since we've been uh, through DRC and um, Angola. As I said, it's because um, they are fascinated and overwhelmed uh, by a train, a beautiful train is ours, um, the most luxurious train in the world coming through their tracks. They have never seen anything like that. So they are overwhelmed, enthusiastic. Please enjoy your stay. I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you. So all of the problems that I've encountered, uh, encountered, I have to put them down and as well as come up with a solution on how we can actually make it better. So that's one of the best things I love about <laughs> being the first person um, on, uh, on this journey because I can actually influence the next itinerary or the next journey, the next copper trail journey uh, for next year. Now the copper trail is here to stay indeed. That I am sure about. I love it, I love it. <laughs> here, we disembark from the train to spend three nights in the South Rangwa National Park. A transfer to the new Ndola airport confirms the rapid and extensive development of the Ndola region. A transfer to Ndola airstrip for a charter flight to South Rwangwa National Park. Welcome to the Mfue International Airport, gateway to the wildlife. Upon arrival at the Mfue Lodge, there is no shortage of delicious catering. While the night falls, you feel embraced by the immense colors of the famous African skies. The first day out of three. Being on a guided game drive, your goal is to experience being in the bush and see African wildlife in their natural habitat. Sightings are never guaranteed. Each and every game drive is different. We consider ourselves quite lucky this time. I like uh, so much uh, the animals. I like so much uh, even the culture of uh, the people that uh, I met during this uh, game safari and uh, this has been the, the best moment uh, in our copper trail. The South Luangwa National Park was initially founded as the Luangwa Game Park in 1904 and converted to one of three game reserves in 1938. The impressive park covers about 9,050 square kilometers of the Luangwa Valley floor and lies anywhere from 500 to 800 meters above sea level. The park is bordered by the Muchinga Escarpment to the west and northwest and the meandering Luangwa River to the south. There is no shortage of dramatic and fascinating landscapes in this beautiful, game-rich park. We saw a huge amount of animals. It's not so common to see all together those animals. Yeah. 
The afternoon game drive in the Luangwa Valley was punctuated by an on-site bush barbecue prepared by local chefs. Surrounded by the pristine wilderness in this game reserve, the spirit of the wild quickly asserts its dominance and no man can escape from it. At the end of the day, a fascinating African performance underlined the spirit of nature towards man. What a show, and what a way to end the day. <laughs> After all, this is an open park. Rangers will safely escort you into the night. After a return flight to Ndola, we rejoin the train, heading for Lubumbashi, the first stop into the Democratic Republic of Congo. At this point, we're already halfway on the Copper Trail journey. The staff is preparing lunch in the dining cars as the train travels towards the Sakania border post. When it comes to food and drink, the catering staff conjure up the finest four or five course menus, produced from all corners of the world with attention to detail. Decadent multi-course meals with fine wines are served on luxury trains. A big part of the experience on board this type of train is dressing up for dinner. The dining car, where tables are adorned with white linen and waiters present gourmet dishes on fine china. But as you can imagine, preparing and serving gourmet food on a moving train presents some challenges. Many different nationalities travel on board Rovos Rail. This requires highly skilled chefs who have to find a balance between authentic South African cuisine and international dishes you may feel like never leaving the train. But the many stops along the way bring new adventures and stories. Like the arrival in Sakania, this border post is our farewell to Zambia before the train enters the Democratic Republic of Congo. All border formalities are prepared in advance by a representative of the administration. African sky turns red again, the train enters the Democratic Republic of Congo. Lumbumbashi, the second largest city in the Democratic Republic of Congo, with a population of 1.7 million and another gateway to the Copper Trail Belt. Lumbumbashi is located in the mining region of the Copper Belt. The copper and malachite industries have long been the backbone of the local economy. On arrival, long distance train travel requires maintenance and service. Needless to say, traveling in this part of the world is quite demanding. Time for a city tour and to learn more about the past and present. Lubumbashi is striving to give new impetus to the city's development by showcasing its industrial heritage with creativity with more than 50 workshops dedicated to malachite carving, the city's policy reflects the importance of handcrafts as a key lever to boost employment. About religion, in Lumbashi, these are predominantly Christian. The Church of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese offers confessionals in all kinds of idioms, such as Swahili. Swahili, also known by its native name, Kiswahili is the language spoken along the East African coast and is widely spoken in more than 14 countries. The National Museum of Lubumbashi was founded in 1946 on the initiative of a Belgian professor, Francis Gabou. Over the years, a rich ethnographic collection has been built up. 
representing a rich heritage and forming the permanent entry point to the Copper Belt Trail. Next stop, Kolwezi. This area is home to one of the largest known copper and cobalt deposits in the world. The onboard lecturer, Nicholas, in the constant presence of the media, explains why this journey is called the Copper Trail. Well, I guess it's called the Copper Trail for a couple of very important reasons. Um, the first reason, I think, is the importance of copper as a mineral. And copper is something that has been very important in Southern Africa for many hundreds of years. Copper was used by African people for hundreds of years as a medium of exchange. People had smelting skills and they exploited copper resources near the surfaces of the lands where copper was available. This was important for local economies, but copper was also important for uh, developing weaponry, for developing agricultural implements, for enabling societies to prosper. There was a chap by the name of Robert Williams, actually, back in, in 1908, who, <coughs> who discovered the copper up here, not himself, but well, there he's a geologist, he knew about it, and uh, they discovered that it was a lot bigger than they thought initially. <laughs> And uh, he knew that to get the copper to the, to, the, to the open market, he needed a railway line. And hence, he started building it in 1910 or so. They only finished in 1928 because of the uh, interruption of the First World War. This game completes about a mile of permanent way a day. This is not a variation of the Charleston, but a way of balancing the heavy weight of the rail. During the First World War, of course, um, there was a huge demand for copper, so uh, they were exporting a lot already. The copper ore is dug out and carried to the works where the metal is extracted. The copper comes white hot from the furnaces. The molten metal cools into ingots that are sent to supply the needs of Europe. Early geologists discovered the potential of minerals as a source of great wealth. And this is the other main reason why I think this is called the Copper Trail. And so the train traveling through these areas, um, it's, 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 it's sort of so central to why, the, why this area has developed in the last 100 years, why the railway exists, this is very important indeed. Had, had, uh, had there been no copper here um, on the tracks that we've been traveling along, I doubt if we'd have this rail journey now. The arrival in Kowezi brings the Copper Trail journey back into the news. Since the start of the inaugural journey, this new initiative by Rovas Rail has been in the local news all over. Being protected and guided by the local police is an understatement. So on our next excursion, everyone feels very safe. The Democratic Republic of Congo has changed in many ways throughout history. From colonialism to wars, to the Republic status of today. Kolwesi is an area that is home to one of the largest known deposits of copper and cobalt in the world. The country thrives on copper production and is one of the most important industries. Zambia has about five large open pit mines. The government has a stake in some of these companies while the Chinese influence cannot be overlooked. Just 20 kilometers outside Kolwesi is Lake Nzilo, a riviera where we take a moment of contemplation after the impressions and lessons of the day. Before saying goodbye to the Republic of Congo and leaving for Luau, Angola.
The town of Luau is the starting point of the Benguela Railway. The Benguela Railway is a railway line that crosses Angola from west to east. It is the largest and most important line of its kind. It's connected to the port of Lopito on the Atlantic coast from where all kinds of products are exported, including minerals from the Copper Belt region. All COVID-19 hygiene protocols are taken seriously as another stunning musical reception welcomes Rovos Rail guests once again. Upon arrival in the town of Luau, we are greeted with traditional African songs and dances. Luau is a town and a municipality in the province of Mexico, on the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. Walk through the town of Luau is a pleasant way to learn more about the past and the present. Until independence, the town was called Texeira de Sousa, named after the Portuguese Prime Minister Antonio Texeira de Sousa. The town once had a population of almost 90,000, as it was developed as a stopping point for the Benguela Railway. Since Angola's independence, the city has shrunk considerably. Religion in Angola is diverse with Christianity being the most widespread faith. About half of the country's population is Roman Catholic. We take the warm welcome in our hearts. It's time to say goodbye though. We depart Luau and the train will head for Luena, our next stop. Day 10. On one of the world's most luxurious trains, a day on board is one of reflection and well-being, a timeless journey through this part of the world. It was Charles Dickens who once said, I'm never sure of time or place. I can't read, I can't think, I can't sleep, I can only dream. Rattling along in this railway carriage in a state of luxurious confusion. An early arrival in the city of Luena. The city is called the City of Peace. Angola has been at war for about 30 years. The center of Luena, the capital of the eastern province of Mexico, is dominated by a peace monument, honoring the city's participation in the country's peace process. The Luena Agreement marked the end of the war, a new period of further engagement in Angolan society. Civil War is deeply rooted in the country, and the remnants are still visible today. The positive African attitude is a unique backbone in society and promising. People's resilience and belief in a better world contributes to high hopes.
Cuito is our next destination. Long distance travel by train is a great way to meet new friends and interesting people. The opulent Rovas Rail Pride of Africa train, which crosses four countries in 15 days, takes passengers from the tip of Zimbabwe to Angola's largest port city, Lobito. Sometimes the best way to get the most out of an experience like this is to slow it down a bit, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Cuito is the capital of the province Pie, a laid-back city. Enjoy an early morning stroll through the town, which lies in the historic heart of Imbundo Kingdom. In the heart of Angola, Cuito takes the visitor to another world where life slows down and Mother Nature graces us with unparalleled beauty. Let the local people take you by the hand and share the history that shows their way of living. Cuito, formerly known as Silva Porto, is a town and municipality in central Angola. The municipality had a population of half a million, making it the 10th fastest growing city on the African continent. Today's excursion is an introduction into Angola's past, including the signature of the former Portuguese architecture and landmarks. There's always a happy hour somewhere. No shortage of bubbles on Rova's rail. Cuito, Huambo. We are about to start the last leg of our journey on the Copper Trail. The remaining 400 kilometers are still ahead of us. It's amazing how quickly this kind of luxury train traveling makes you feel at home. Life on board has been carefully designed with a focus on comfort, relaxation, and enjoyment. On day 14, the train arrives in Huambo. Huambo is the second largest city in Angola and one of the ancient kingdoms on the central plateau. Huambo, formerly Nova Lisboa, was founded in 1912 by Portuguese settlers and workers on the Benguela Railway. Huambo was a transport center with one of the largest railway repair workshops in Africa. The town of Huambo suffered heavy damage during the Angolan Civil War, as it was the scene of much fighting going around. After the end of the war, sections of the Benguela Railway were repaired and some lines were put back into service, which contributed to the reconstruction of the town and the surrounding area. Religion and churches in Angola are spreading rapidly. Father Moutinho brought to the city of Huambo in 1962, that image of Our Lady from Fatima in Portugal. Their services bring relief from the past and help to forgive today and in the future. This place is so important. The traditional um, power is installed, established in here. So there is a there is a traditional authority that lives here, and here is the traditional. Back on board the train, time for a cocktail. What better way to start an evening in style? Our last dinner on the Copper Trail is themed the 1920s. <laughs>
tomorrow we will arrive in Lobito, the final destination of this amazing journey. An early morning departure. Anyone who has ever traveled through the countryside of Angola has certainly been inspired and impressed by the sheer beauty of the landscape and the richness and fertility of nature. Rovas Rail, the pride of Africa, runs like an iron ribbon through the beauty of the African land countryside. This in a broad variety of landscapes. Lobito in sight. At the platform of Lobito Station, another overwhelming welcome. While the staff is busy organizing the disembarkation, all the passengers enjoy the music and dancing performances with a certain sentiment. After all, this 15-day journey on the Copper Trail journey was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Lobito, a port city in western Angola on the Atlantic coast north of the Catumbela estuary. The Bay of Lobito is one of the most beautiful natural harbors in Africa. It's protected by a five kilometer long sandbank. Tourism is still underdeveloped. Nevertheless, it looks promising. Traveling on board of the Rovas Rail, the pride of Africa, gave us a better insight into the general African culture and lifestyle. We, as the Cruising on Rail team, strongly recommend this Copper Trail journey. A must-do, luxurious train adventure and undeniably here to stay.